It's the Introvert Dating Success Podcast, the show for introverted men that's all about learning how to attract beautiful women and still get your precious alone time. And now, here's your host, dating coach and fellow introvert, Harry Wilmington. Hey guys, welcome to the Introvert Dating Success Show, courtesy of introvertdatingsuccess.com. I'm your host as always, Harry Wilmington. And today, we're going to be answering a question from a guy that actually wrote me, and he's having a situation whereby he's 48 years old, and he has plenty of alone time to himself at this point, but he's not having the dating life that he wants, and he's not getting enough dates. And so I read through his message several times, and I want to be able to go through and just kind of answer some of the points that he brought up. But I will say, in reading the totality of the message, I'm getting the feeling from this guy that the viewpoint of himself and his life and his ability to attract women really is the determining factor in why it is that he's not as successful as he wants to be. Because I'm I'm 40 now, he's 48, but a lot of the things that he mentioned at one point in time, I had the same experience, I had the same beliefs about myself and about women and about you know, me not having success was the result of these things. But a lot of times when we're not having success in something, we can be so in it that we don't realize that there are things we're doing or saying that are actually not beneficial to us in the dating world. So we could think, well, I'm, I'm doing everything that I need to do, but the women aren't coming to me. But then like there's parts of the message where he says he's doing certain things. And when I look at it, my first thought is like, oh, well, this is a, this is the action you're doing that's actually causing women to react this way. And I think a lot of times, because we're all the heroes in our own story, oftentimes we don't recognize that as our own heroes, we have our own Achilles heels that we're not even aware of that are causing us to fail. On top of, again, your viewpoint of life and how things operate is going to determine your dating outcome. As men in particular, we are very logic-based and we oftentimes think of that as um, a positive thing versus being overly emotional. But the problem with logic is even logic is steeped in emotion. So we might think, well, logically, I'm doing these things and they should work. We're not looking at why our logic that we have about why that should work is actually flawed. So with all that said, I'm going to get into this guy's message. As always, guys, if you have a question that you want me to answer on one of these shows, you can write to me at harrywilmington at gmail.com. That's harrywilmington at gmail.com. Also, if you go to the website, you can check out my various ebooks, audiobooks, and programs that are all designed to help you date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. All right. So, with all that said, let's go ahead and get into this guy's message. And I'm going to stop at various parts along the way so I can kind of zero in on and answer some of the things that I'm noticing. So here we go. Guy writes, he says, hi, Harry, I'm sleepless in Green Bay. Oh, I'll never read you guys' name on the show that write me, okay? Uh, I'm sleepless in Green Bay and I am an introvert. I have been listening to your podcast and there was one issue that I'm waiting for you to cover. For reference sake, I'm 48 and I live in Wisconsin. He says, what happens when all you have is alone time? I'm probably extremely socially awkward. My luck with women has been probably record-breaking low. My game in public is awful, and it has gotten to the point where I don't even bother going out anymore because I will get the look of, quote, who's that creepy guy out there all alone? So I want to address this part first. So this is an example of how you're feeling about yourself internally. You are projecting out into the world and saying that other people must have that same viewpoint of you. So when he says uh, he doesn't want people to think who's that creepy guy out all alone, that means that when he goes out, what he's thinking is, I don't want to stay here too long because I am that creepy guy that's all alone. And since I'm alone, people are going to see me as creepy, and I don't want that. But that's an objective viewpoint. That's the viewpoint that he has of himself. And so when he goes out there, he's already not going out there thinking that, People are looking at him. Hey, people could be looking at him and thinking, man, he's able to go out here by himself and have a good time. I wish I had that confidence. And I used to think the same way back in the day. I used to think if I go out by myself, what's that going to mean? But then I start to realize there's so many things I want to do and so many places I want to go. And just because I don't have a partner 
that should not stop me from doing those things. And when I would do those things, people would come up to me and be like, oh my God, you're so bold for going, you went to this concert by yourself, you went on this trip by yourself, like I wish I could do that. So people might be looking at you thinking, I wish I had the confidence that this guy had to be able to do stuff alone and still live his life. But their viewpoint doesn't matter. If you're not on board with your viewpoint and if you think that your viewpoint is weird, then all you're gonna do when you go out there is project the things that you're thinking about yourself onto other people. And that's not fair to other people or to you because that also means that you're going out there and you might be by yourself at a bar, for example, and you see a woman and you're thinking to yourself, oh, she probably thinks I'm creepy because she's got her friends over there and I'm just here by myself. So I don't even wanna give that impression or, or go up to her because I'm gonna be that creepy guy. And she could be in the group with four of her girlfriends and all of her girlfriends have significant others and she was only able to get them out on this night because all of her friends' husbands or boyfriends were doing other things. But she's sitting there like, man, I'm the fifth one in this group. I'm always the fifth wheel. I wish I had a guy. But you don't even know that or consider that because you're thinking she's th going to think I'm creepy. So the first thing is to understand that you need to get this idea out of your head that you're a creepy guy for going anywhere alone, let alone being a creepy guy simply because you're by yourself and you might want to hit on a woman. Like, there are plenty of women out there that are also single that are waiting for a guy that is by himself to come up to them because they don't know who's single and who's not either, you know? But if you know that you're single, you can go out there and at least make an impression on a woman that, hey, I just want to come and talk to you. And also, I know sometimes guys can be very judgmental of themselves about the idea of approaching a woman and appearing creepy. But if you approach them in a respectful way, I have found more often than not, that they're going to be typically more open to that because women themselves are horrible at taking rejection, which is why most women, when they reject guys, try to do it in a very subtle, gentle way because they've, the few times they've gotten rejected, it did not feel good to them. Okay. So you go up to a woman at a bar and just be like, Hey, you know, you want to drink or, Hey, you know, what's, what's your favorite song that you're listening to right now or whatever, you know, that's not going to be creepy. You going up to her and drooling and calling her the best thing you've ever seen in your life and all those other things. That's not what you want to do. And I have a bunch of stuff at my website that can teach you about the ins and outs of how to approach in a way that is natural and that is not going to chase women up. All right. Uh, but anyway, continuing on, he says, I only have one or two good friends and I really don't want to bother them much because they are both married and with families. Now, I know as an introvert that the hardest thing to do, especially as an adult, is to be able to get more friends. Okay. Okay. But that doesn't mean that it's impossible. And so you have to figure out ways to be able to expand your friend circle. It ain't got to be a lot of people. Like I'm not saying go from two friends to like 20 friends. But I am saying if you have two friends, maybe you start doing activities where you can meet other guys and then expand your circle to like five friends. Then you have five people that you can go to at any given time to talk to, to hang out with, try to make friends with some other single guys as well, just so you, that way you're not always left out in the dark by you know husbands that have to do with their wives or whatever. But again, this is one of those things where you're making the excuse that you only have a couple of friends, but you see that as a barrier. You have the power to fix that barrier. And that might mean having to get out of your comfort zone a little bit to be able to find other ways to be able to meet new people, all right? Even at the age of 48, it's possible because I'm at 40 and I'm still going out there purposely, like going to meetup groups, going to networking things, going to activities that I like to do and meeting people. They might not become my bestie besties, but if I see them at these events, I can talk to them. They're cordial. They might be able to network me with other people that would gel with me. And so you got to keep that in mind as well, okay? Don't let being an introvert prevent you from doing the things you have to do to make a couple new friends, all right? Continuing, he says, people I know, I ask them if they know anybody, and the answer I get from that is no. Well, understand that it's hard for other people at times to be able to set you up with other people, in part because they may not necessarily know what behaviors you have that are going to gel with other friends in their circle. For example, let's say, just a minor example, let's say you're into Dungeons and Dragons. So your friends come to you, you go to your friends and you say, hey, I'm looking for somebody, and they might be thinking, okay, if I, if I try to match them with somebody, it has to be somebody that also likes Dungeons and Dragons, and I don't know anybody. Now, they might have women in their friendship circle that they are unaware of that play Dungeons and Dragons. But if they're unaware of that need, of that thing that the woman does, then they might not know that a particular woman would want to match with you. Also, 
this, just to be honest, a lot of people have personal and private behaviors that they do not reveal to the world. So your friends might know who you are, but they not be they, not, they they might not be aware of some of the more private behaviors that you have, or they might be aware of some of your behaviors and might not be aware of any women in their circle that also have those behaviors that they're doing privately that would actually match with yours. Okay, so it can be very hard to go to friends and try to ask for recommendations. Most importantly, also because if your friends by association, they're friends with you, they're friends with her. If it doesn't work out, this now creates tension amongst their friendship with that other person if you end up being a bad recommendation. And that's not to say that your friends don't have faith in you. It just means that a lot of friends aren't willing to take that risk that you are good in a relationship, especially if like, honestly, at 48, if you're 48 and single, that means that you've had a lot of years where they probably think you weren't that great of a significant other to be with, even if they like you as a friend. So they might not know how you are in the relationship stage of things to where whether or not you'd be a good recommendation or not. Like they just don't know. Okay. So that's why that tends to happen. Continuing. He says the women in the office, the women in the office I work at are all married. I even joined a gym just after new year's and joined an exercise class only to find out all the women in the class are either married or with a boyfriend. So I don't know your gym like that. I don't know if this means that you went to the gym and you saw their boyfriends there with them, or if they just told you that if they just t all told you that they're married and they all told you that they have a boyfriend, uh, I'm going to assure you that some of those women did not have a boyfriend. They just didn't want to, they didn't feel that connection with you. And that happens sometimes, but you, but the, the, for one, the, I'm assuming the town that you live in, there's probably more than one gym. I don't know if that's true or not, but if one gym's not working for you, then go to another gym. But what I've also found is this, is that, the purpose of going to the gym shouldn't be to pick up on women. The purpose of going to the gym should be to work on yourself and, you know, doing push-ups, building muscle. But I have found in my personal life that when I'm just focusing on me and just trying to do things better for myself, that's when outsiders are typically looking at me when I'm not aware. And so it could very well be if you just actually focus on the working out portion of things, inevitably there'll be a woman that comes in there that sees you just working out hard and jump roping and doing the dumbbells or whatever. And will start to be like, Oh, that guy's really like trying to work on himself. And that by default will make her attracted to you. But you going there trying to focus on getting women that can be to your detriment. Continuing. He says, Oh, here we go. And don't get me started on online dating. It just seems that every disappointment I get from that drives me further down into depression. Now, I will say this. Online dating is a realm where you don't have to be the best looking guy, but you do have to know how to put your best foot forward. I do not know what you look like, guys, so I can't say whether what you need to improve on, whether it's your, your, uh, your clothing, your hair, um, or how you're presenting yourself in terms of the kind of pictures you're putting up. Um, but you have to be aware of that. You have to be aware that that is a looker's medium. So if you're not looking the part, then it's going to be hard for you to get matches. And again, I have a whole program at my website, the Smart Digital Dating Program, that is designed to help you uh, work your way through the ins and outs of how to meet women online, how to set up your profile, your bio, also talks about what kind of messages to send to women and how to ultimately ask them on a date. And there's various steps because these steps are important. You can't just go on these things and frivolously just throw your throw your best moves at the wall and hope it's going to be lucky. Like, no, there are tried and true techniques that are going to allow you to be your authentic self online, but will allow you to move the goalpost closer to actually getting dates. All right. And I can help you with that at the website. Continuing, he says, I do have some standards as I'm looking online. So he says not smoking. He wants somebody that's somewhat active within a reasonable driving distance has to at least have interest in me. And honestly, I, I found like for me, as I got older, some of those things didn't matter as much. Like 20s version of me was like, I don't want any kind of smokers whatsoever. 30s version of me was more like, well, if they smoke like a little bit of weed or marijuana, as long as they don't do it around me, because that, that smell doesn't tend to stick very well, then I can be good with it. And so there are a couple of women that I dated that smoked and I wasn't a smoker, but they were polite enough to be out of the room when they did smoke. And so that was able to make me feel like, okay, this could be a thing that we do, you know? And so you have to look at, especially at 48, you really got to look at, are there any standards that I'm holding that are a little too high and I could actually like, you know, kind of bend a little bit on some of these things that aren't the biggest deals in the world. Okay. And that's, that's something that you have to look at and something that you have to consider for yourself in terms of what those things would actually be. Continuing, he says, 
Uh, but if I match up with someone, that is the last I hear from them. Uh, some platforms are like that. Like I know TikTok's not really good at that. Like if you if you match on TikTok with somebody, the chances of them getting back to you are slim to none. But there are other platforms I found like your OkCupid's or Hinges, whereby those are platforms where you can actually attempt to message the woman first. And I found on those, it's a lot easier to get women to respond to you on apps where you can message them first versus ones where you have to swipe and you both have to swipe in order for them to, to you know, be able to, you have access to write them back. Okay. So try to look for dating online dating platforms where you can actually write to them before they decide to match with you or not, just so you can get a little bit of your personality out there and they can see right off the bat if they gel with both your looks and with how you're talking to them versus just solely your looks. Continuing, he says, uh, if I do send them a message, all I pretty much get in return is read and then delete it. And then he says, I'm always respectful. I sometimes use the message of good evening. How are you doing? And then he asks, is that too forceful? Uh, then I'll finish up. He says, it is just that every disappointment I get uh, drives me down to the point where I'm not sure I even want to try to put myself out there. So, I'll, so let's go back to his to, to the online message he sends uh, where he says, good evening. How are you doing? Okay. So this is an example of this guy thinks he's trying to do everything right, but there is a snafu in the game that he's trying to do. So I have never had success on online dating when I sent the message of good evening, good morning, how are you doing, question mark. Why? Because it is a non-starter question, okay? You got to look at this. Women, I, I, I did an experiment a couple years ago whereby I posed as a woman online dating, just putting up some pictures and a few things about the bio, whatever. And in the span of 24 to 48 hours, I had 179 matches and 69 messages that were in uh, my message bank, okay? The majority of the men that were writing were saying things like, hey, hi, how are you? Good morning, beautiful. How are you, gorgeous? Blah, blah, blah. So ask yourself the question, are you standing out to her with that first message that you send her? Because I can guarantee you a message like this, 10 20, 30 other guys are sending this exact same message, all thinking that she's never heard that question before. And women have heard that question repeatedly, okay? So this is why in my Smart Digital Dating course, I actually give you guys a few things to open with. But also, it's not about having to have the world's best opener, but you do have to have some kind of question or sentence that's going to help drive the conversation. I typically st tend to stick to the air of, let me see what's in her, her uh, profile, between her message, the bio that she set up and between the pictures that she has in there, I can probably find something to then ask a question about. So if a woman, for example, has a, has a thing on a profile where she's skiing somewhere, I might be like, whoa, somebody's trying to be an Olympian. Like, what mountain are you skiing on right there? Because now that gives her direction as to, okay, this guy's asking me about this particular thing. I can now riff on this thing that he's talking about. But if you just say, good evening, how are you? What's her response supposed to be? I'm fine. I'm great. How are you too? She does not care about how you're doing yet because she doesn't know you. And she knows that you don't actually care about how she's doing. So you need to, your first question or message to her should be something that's going to start a conversation and not just be this thing where it's like, it's not an open-ended question. It's a very nonchalant question and it's a boring question that she gets all the time. But again, this is an example of he thinks he's doing something the right way and it's not working, but really this is a, a mix up in his game that's actually causing him to not get that many messages. If we go back, so you have to look at like, okay, what things is he doing and how is his game actually messing it up for him? Okay. So let's look back at his message again. Okay. He says, um, when he goes out, he's that creepy guy. Okay. Well, when he goes out, what things is he doing that, is making him feel like he's being a creepy guy. Is he standing in an awkward position? Is he like just kind of looking at women and not approaching them? Because that can be seen as creepy. If you just, if you look at a woman for more than like five seconds and you don't approach her, that does look creepy. So then how could you fix that part of your game? Could you have a time in your head where it's like, okay, I got three seconds from when I see a woman to walk up to her and say something or else I'm going to be seen as creepy. So then you practice that game, you know? Um, when you go to the gym and you see all these women, you, you don't need to go up to them and ask them, are they single? But you need to figure out, okay, if I'm in the gym and I see a woman, like what do I need to do? Or what, what kind of workout they need to be doing that's going to get her intrigued enough to want to talk to me. The point is you need to look at every single aspect of what you're doing. And if it's not working, recognize that it's not that women don't like you. It's that however you're presenting yourself to the world 
is not the most effective way to keep a woman's interest. And these are things that you can learn. But what I don't want you to do is what a lot of guys do, which is A, become so much of the hero in your story that you think that it's not that you're doing things wrong, it's that the world is crazy. And also recognize that there are things about you right now that you are doing that you're not aware of and you need to become aware of it. You need to work on it. You need to diligently seek out those things and recognize, okay, you know what? I've been doing this this my whole life. I'm 48. It could be anything. It could be, you know, the way that you're awkward at bringing up conversations, in which case you need to learn how to be able to open up a conversation. It could be, you know, women do research. If you're doing online dating, a woman might start looking into your social media accounts. They might start looking into the kind of job you do. They might be doing a full on online search and they might see things on there that aren't pleasant. So you got to figure out, okay, is my social media set up a certain way to where the women that I want are going to like be, are, are not going to be attracted to me? Or if they are attracted to me, are going to be chased off when they see a certain picture or read a certain thing or see I have certain ideas about certain things. Like you got to be aware of all this stuff. This is why, I highly recommend not making your social medias too, con too uh, controversial, you know, uh, anything political, religious, um, just any kind of creepy things you may put up that you think are funny or, or certain types of jokes that you think are going to be laugh riots. Well, they might rub women the wrong way. And a woman that does not know you and sees those things is going to make a judgment about you before she gets the chance to even meet you. So you might think you're a nice guy. She might read something on your social media or see something on the internet about you. That's like, Oh crap, this guy's not as nice as the guys I thought he was and delete you before you even get a chance to say hi to them. Okay. Uh, if it's online dating, if your messages, your first messages are causing you to get deleted. then that means that you need to look at the kind of messages you're sending to women online and see if there's better ways to connect with them. If the questions you're asking are resulting in them saying, eh, I'm not going to match with this guy anymore, then you need to stop asking those questions and figure out what kinds of conversations women like to have with a guy through messaging that actually gets them hype up and gets them happy to want to talk to them, okay? And again, I have a lot of these things at my website you can check out, but the point is, whether it's my stuff or whether it's you doing your own research for you know years on end, you got to figure this stuff out, okay? Because at 48, it means that you, you've been going about dating women and about trying to attract them in the wrong way. And I know as an introvert, it can be hard because especially if you, if you spent so much time alone, then unbeknownst to you, you might've picked up some bad habits as a result of being alone all this time that you're not aware is seeping into your interactions with women that they're finding off putting. Okay. And so you have to get yourself around more people. I did a few shows, a few shows back where I talked about meetup.com. And I think it's a really great website to use to be able to find out events that are going on in your town and then go to those events, network, meet people. Don't even go to the events to try to meet women. Just find an interest that meetup has that you're like, Oh, you know, there are people are doing this hike this day or people going to this club or going to this museum or going to this restaurant to meet up and, you know, go to those things and just mingle with people, meet new guys, meet women, just try to become friends and just practice talking, practice interacting with other people outside of you and your apartment. And then as you get good at that, you'll start to see as you're, as you're more of a presence in these environments, then people will start to see you more and more and they'll start to have a natural interest in who you are. And that could include women who might start to actually like you, okay? Also, consider other, you know, consider going to singles events, consider going to mixers, consider going to speed dating events, you know? These are things that are going to help you break out of your shell and help you become better at actually talking to other people, okay? I think right now, there might be a little bit of uh, approach anxiety or just anxiety in general, social anxiety, uh, a fear about trying to look a certain way or be a certain way or not saying the right thing. And if you do say the wrong thing, it's going to chase women off. And this all boils down to practice, practice, practice. You have to practice going to environments where you can talk and get yourself out there. So that way you can have a more realistic shot at becoming comfortable with that and thereby meeting women that will actually want to date you. Okay. And then also again, focus on your personal goals and really focus on like the things that you want to do, because just you being out in the world and doing those things, you're going to run into people. Real talk, real talk. I, I am at home at my apartment and I film videos like for various businesses and things like that. And so I just happened to go down to my garage like the other day and this woman was uh, with two other friends of mine that I know. And I would have never met this woman anywhere else, but I, I was just there and she was there and she got to talking to me and I got to talking to her and she seemed like she was actually like interested. I was like, oh crap, I'm literally just going about my life 
living my life and just working on things I got to work on. And now here's this woman and she seems interested. I go to a party party later that night for a friend of mine and she has other friends that are there, including a couple girls. And then by the end of the night, it's like, crap, now they're interested. Like, but it's like, I'm not seeking those things out. It's just, I'm in these environments. I'm putting myself out there in the world. And then these women happen to show up. So whether or not I decide to partake in those interactions is totally up to me in those situations. But it's like, I recognize it. I recognize the importance of when you're just out there doing your thing, and women can see that, and you're talking about your life and what you do and the things that you're excited about, then by proxy of that, women will get excited about those things because you're sounding excited about those things. You're sounding excited about your life and about the things you're into. And really, honestly, most women want to be drawn into a guy's circle. Like most women don't really want to take the lead on, oh, I'm doing these things and I want to bring a guy into my world. They're usually looking at I have my world over here, but this guy over here seems like he has a lot of good stuff going on that's really cool. He seems friendly, supportive. He's got a lot of friends. And you know what? I'd love to be around that kind of energy as well. And so you bring women into your energy. You don't look to try to find a woman and then jump into her energy, okay? So hopefully that'll kind of give you an idea of what you need to be doing and how to put yourself out there. But in terms of getting more dates, I'd say for online dating, work on your messaging. Again, I don't know what you look like. So also work on your, your bio pictures and talk, work on the prompts that you're putting out there and the bios that you're, the things you're putting in your bio. You have to really be aware of the things you're saying about yourself and how you're presenting yourself online because there's a difference between like saying, you know, what was me? I'm a guy and I'm single. I just want a nice girl to cuddle up, blah, 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 versus what kind of lifestyle are you projecting on these dating apps That'll make a woman say, I want to now be drawn into his lifestyle, okay? So that's why you don't want to get overly emotional when you're going through your dating bio, okay? In terms of meeting women in person, again, think about drawing them in. You're at a bar, you're drinking a drink, you see a girl next to you, you might just start talking to her like, hey, what do you think about this drink? Or like, you know, hey, tell me about yourself, whatever's that. And then you have banter and rapport, okay? And again, this may be a thing you got to practice, which is why you need to start going to meetup things. You need to start going to networking things, but go to things where you can get out of just being alone in your place so that way you can start interacting more with the outside world. And again, as an introvert, it's going to take some energy. But even me as an introvert, I can usually tolerate an hour and a half to two hours of being out there in the world and talking to new people that I don't know. It gives me enough time to meet them. They get a little taste of my personality. And then I can bolt out and go back home and be alone. But it does allow a person to know me. And then so when they see me later on, then they can be like, oh, hey, I remember you, so-and-so, this is that. And now I've opened up and expanded my circle. And also I now have women that I can now talk to, okay? So hopefully this helps you out. And for those of you that want a question answered on one of these shows, again, you can write to me at harrywilmington at gmail.com. If you're watching this on YouTube at youtube.com slash harrywilmington, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer that comment or question on one of these shows, okay? If you want to support the show, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash harrywilmington. If you want to uh, support monetarily, you can go to introvertdatingsuccess.com, click on the tip jar tab and show your support monetarily that way, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching the show or for listening to the show on the podcast. I'm Harry Wilmington, and I will catch you guys on the next one. I'm out. Peace.